My next guest is a survivor of the 1979 Iran hostage crisis. As a former U.S. Embassy's press attaché, Barry Rosen was one of the 52 Americans held for 444 days. He tweeted, I am starting a hunger strike this week in Vienna, 41 years after my release, to demand the release of all hostages being held by Iran. And Washington Post columnist Jason Rezaian was also released this week, six years ago. Yesterday, he tweeted, Six years ago today, I was freed after being held hostage in Iran for 544 days. I was taken from prison, boarded a flight leaving Tehran, and reunited with my family. It was a day of celebration and relief. Jason is also the host of the podcast 544 Days about his ordeal. Barry and Jason join me both now. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here. We appreciate your time. Barry, let me start with you. You're heading to Vienna, where talks have been going on to try and revive the deal that limited Iran's nuclear program. Why a hunger strike, and why now? Well, you know, it, it's been, uh, on Thursday, it will be 41 years since my release. I felt very strongly, after giving it much thought, that, you know, I need to do something to to free the hostages. It's been four decades that, that this has been going on. Iran has been taking hostages as uh, bargaining chips and pawns, uh, destroying the lives of people. And, and mo mo mostly for me, it's the issue of the human being above the political situation. And I wanna see that our allies, uh, America and our allies push Iran to say, look, we're not going to have a deal unless all the hostages are released. I think it's about time. This has been going on too long. Jason, you wrote in the Washington Post last week that if there is to be a return to the nuclear deal, the international community must use all tools available to alter the regime's other destructive activities. And I imagine you are including hostage taking among those activities. Are you optimistic this could happen? Well, first of all, Larry, thank you for having Barry and I on to talk about this important subject. And I I want to wish Barry um, great good luck and health. Um, he's been an advocate for the release of hostages for many years. Uh, yeah, I, I think that, that there is hope. Uh, we have deterrence available to us uh, in international law and here in the U.S. in, in our legal code uh, to, to punish hostage taking. Um, a deterrent that we haven't been actively using. So I think that there is the the uh, the means and the resources to address this issue. Whether there's the political will or not is another question. And let me pick up on that, um, Barry, because the U.S. and its allies can't even get Iran to agree on the current nuclear agreement deal. So do you think there's that will to go further to press Iran on hostages and other human rights abuses? Well, I think one... one uh conceivable way for me is to embarrass Iran. That's why I'm doing this, this hunger strike. Iranian culture and civilization has been talking about in literature and art about the, the civilized Iranian uh, country. And Iran has a long history of, of working with um, guests. The idea of the guest in the country, it should be esteemed rather than being punished. So I, my aim, I think, is to try to free Ira Iranian, Amer American Iranians and, and European Iranians because I want Iran to understand what they're doing is adverse to their own culture and history. And Jason, you have an, you've been an advocate for other hostages in Iran since you were released six years ago. You have a thrilling podcast, which sounds kind of like a guide for um, families that have relatives that are detained. Do you think um, hunger strikes are effective? And what do you recommend for these families to do? Well, I think, uh, you know, my situation, uh, and I would, I, would, I would say that the situation that Barry and, and the 51 other American hostages were in over 40 years ago would indicate that raising awareness, however you can raise awareness on these cases, uh, is, is the way to go about winning the release of, of loved ones, whether it's by Iran or other governments who are unfortunately doing this increasingly. Um, I, I think, unfortunately, most governments would uh, urge citizens not to publicly advocate for their loved ones being held hostage, uh, with the justification being that doing so uh, puts their, their loved one at more peril uh, or potentially raises the, the cost of bringing them home. Evidence, uh, you know, does not bear that out. Um, I think engaging with with adversaries, 
who take uh, our citizens hostages is really the only way to get these people back. And I think Barry's right. I mean, you know, we have to shame Iran, but also teach them that the costs and consequences of doing this and continuing to do this have been extremely detrimental to their country's economy uh, and, and far outweigh whatever gains they think they've achieved by doing this. You have a platform, um, Jason, writing for The Washington Post and being an advocate, like I mentioned, for detained families. But have you been in contact with any officials of the U.S. government about what more can be done and what they're doing? Yeah, I'm constantly in contact not only with families and other advocacy uh, wings uh, and organizations like the one uh, that Barry works with, Hostage Aid uh, Worldwide, uh, but also with members of the current uh, U.S. administration, the previous administration, and the Obama administration. Uh, and I, I think that this is a work in progress. The, the issue has long been deemed one that can't be solved, that will be with us forever, I think that, that we can do much better than this. I don't think that that's true. For me, there are two priorities in, in, in these hostage matters. One, the, the speedy and safe return of our fellow citizens being held hostages. And two, figuring out deterrence to make this practice more difficult, more costly, uh, and deter um, uh, other regimes from doing this in the future. And I think that the conversation has started. Barry's been a big part of that as well as other friends and allies of ours in and out of government. And you mentioned in your tweet thread that hostage taking has become something that lots of autocratic governments around the world now do quite frequently. Uh, what about you, Barry? Have you been in contact with any U.S. government officials about your position and well, your impending hunger strike? Yes, I, I have written both to the Iranian delegation in Vienna and to the special envoy, Robert Malley, in uh, Vienna, too. So I'm trying to set up meetings with them, and I hope uh, my message will be direct to, bo to both of them. M Iran has to release the hostages immediately. The United States should not sign any agreement with Iran until all the hostages are released. And I really would like to add that if there is a signing of an agreement down the road, that if Iran takes hostages once again, the agreement is null and void. We talked at the beginning of this uh, segment about um, Nazanin Zaghari Radcliffe and her husband, mm -hmm. Richard Radcliffe, uh, ending his hunger strike, um, Barry, after three weeks. He was outside the British Home Office um, in London. For how long are you willing to do this? I really don't know. I mean, uh, look, at my age, it's 77. You know, I, I have no idea how long I can sustain it. But I will, I will last as long as I possibly can. For me, it's important to do it to support the hostages and their families. They've gone through grievous human rights violations, and I think I can do something to assist them. My experience and my, the, the imprisonment that I went through and the psychological torture that I went through, I don't want any other person to go through that again. All right, we're gonna leave it there. Many thanks, uh, Barry and, and Jason. Thank you for coming to talk to us and for shining a light on this important subject. Thank you very much. Thank you.